Amen. Thank you so much for that, Miss Paula, choir and orchestra. Finding your Bibles, Mark chapter 4. Mark chapter 4, and today I'm talking about planting in faith for greater things. Planting in faith for greater things. So, I've had many of you express doubt that I could preach a sermon in about 10 or 15 minutes, all right? So we're about to see if that's even possible. I'm going to give you some instructions. Pastor Jimmy's going to conclude the service, but we'll talk specifically about what's going to happen as we transition from our property here to our Highway 96 Victory Park and Sports Complex uh, just a mile or two down the road. We'll have everything taken care of for you, but Pastor Jimmy will conclude the service and give you some uh, instructions. Planting in faith for greater things. Mark chapter 4, beginning in verse 26. Today really is a historic moment in the life of our church. And I recognize that it is not our first historic step, and I am certain it will not be our last historic step. But it's time for us to step out in faith and move forward with the vision that God has entrusted to us and that He's placed before us. It's been a journey. About three years ago, we began a journey of stepping out in faith, praying that God would allow us to do greater things. We've talked specifically about greater things over the last several years, and I know many of you have been faithfully giving and praying for the last three years. It's been a process to get us to where we are today, but I'm excited about this new opportunity, about our groundbreaking today at Highway 96 as we step out in faith to uh, build the nicest park in the county, our Victory Sports Park and Athletic Complex right off of Highway 96, the major highway right here in the middle of our county. So many of you have given sacrificially, you've planned, you've prayed, you've worked hard just to make this day happen as we continue to do our sports ministry here on a consistent basis, season in and season out. And I just want to tell you how grateful I am to each of you. I want to thank uh, Pastor Jimmy and his team. And he would tell you there's a team underneath him of so many faithful people who serve in various areas. I'm so grateful for your leadership in this process. Can I just ask you, if you've been involved in Victory Sports as a coach, as a player, if you've been involved in Upward, helping lead the ministry, Pastor Jimmy, if you've kept score, if you've been a referee, if you've been an umpire, if you've served food, if you've helped with the fields, I just want you to stand up right now all across this building, and I want you to see the impact that Victory Sports has made here at Second Baptist Church. Isn't that incredible? Man, praise God. Thank you so much. Pastor Jimmy, we are so grateful to you uh, for your vision and your leadership, your structure, your organization, administration of this ministry. And there really is no telling what God wants to do as we follow him in faith. And maybe many of you have come in the last year or so, 18 months, and you're wondering what we're even talking about. We've talked for a while about greater things. We've talked about preparing and planning for what God wants to do. And uh, others of you may need your memories refreshed, but we'll talk about that here in a moment. Take a moment and watch the screen for about a 45-second video as we're talking about what we're doing here off of Highway 96. I'm standing right here on our property at Highway 96, the future location of Victory Park. I'm so excited about what God is going to do, and I'm looking forward to being with you right here after the service on this property for our groundbreaking. You should have a bag of seed in your hand. This seed represents how we are praying, preparing, and planting for greater things. I look forward to seeing you here as we celebrate together what God has done, what God is doing, and what God is going to do. I can shoot a short video and I can preach a short sermon, okay? When you walked in today, you should have received a packet of seeds. And in this packet, lots of little grass seeds, okay? You, uh, you've got these and we're going to take these to the park with us. As you came in, you should have received them from one of our players dressed in their victory or upward outfits. All right, here's, here's what this is going to look like. After my short sermon, uh, as a family, as a church... Uh, we want to make our way to our Victory Park property. It's right off of Highway 96, head south on Moody Road, hang a right on Highway 96. It's right there on the left. You have a packet in your, in your hand. This is filled with grass seed. Bring this with you. 
And uh, one of the things that we'll do today is we're going to spread some of this grass seed out on the ground as we plant in faith for greater things. Mark chapter 4, Jesus gives a parable. In verse 26, he says to his followers, he says, The kingdom of God is as if a man should scatter seed on the ground. He sleeps and rises night and day, and the seed sprouts and grows. He knows not how. The earth produces by itself first the blade, then the ear, then the full grain in the ear. But when the grain is ripe, at once he puts the sickle because... The harvest has come. And he said, with what can we compare the kingdom of God? Or what parable shall we use for it? It's like a grain of mustard seed, which when sown on the ground is the smallest of the seeds on earth. Yet when it's sown, it grows up and becomes larger than all the plants. The garden plants put out large branches so the birds of the air can make nests in its shade. With with such many such parables, he spoke the word to them as they were able to hear it. He did not speak to them without a parable, but privately to his own disciples, he explained everything. Do you know that Jesus talks a lot about sowing and reaping? The Bible talks a lot about planting and harvesting. And what we've been doing as a church is praying, preparing, and planting, asking God for greater things. And so this is a symbolic action today. As we go and plant our seed on the grass, in the ground at Victory Park, this is a symbolic action of planting in faith, asking God to do greater things. It's a physical act of sowing something into the ground that will be part of this property in the future. This is a spiritual act of trusting God, asking and believing that He can do greater works, greater things through those of us who follow Him faithfully. And so briefly, I want to share with you a couple of things as we think about what it means to plant in faith for greater things. Number one, we plant in faith. Planting a seed on the ground is inherently an act of faith. You cannot plant a seed while holding it in your hand. You have to release it. You have to let it go. Planting in faith means trusting God and believing that when that seed is cast, when that seed goes to the ground, that that seed will take root and it will grow and something wonderful and beautiful will grow out of the small little seed. The seed has to fall to the ground. You know, you have to let the seed go and the seed has to germinate. The seed has to die in the ground for something else to grow and something better. As we give, as we go, as we serve, as we grow, all of these things are seeds of faith and seeds of obedience. Every devotion given at an Upward or Victory Sports practice, that's a seed being planted. Every time we share the gospel with students or players or coaches or teachers or or adults and parents and grandparents, that's a seed being planted. Every time we have a celebration service after a season. That's a seed being planted. And so I'm excited about what God is going to do. Let me tell you a couple of reasons why I'm excited. Pastor Jimmy and I have talked about this. I'm excited about what I know is going to happen. Because as we build our ball fields and our playground and everything out at the park, I'm excited about what I know is going to happen because I know God is going to use that to reach boys and girls for the gospel of Jesus Christ. But I'm even more excited about the things I don't know are going to happen. Do you know that when we built our Family Life Center back in the mid-90s, we really didn't have an idea about Upward. We didn't know about it. We built that in faith, believing that's what God wanted us to do. And now look what God has done. When we bought this property across Sandy Run Road, International City Church of God, years ago, we bought that believing that we could expand our ministry, but not even knowing all the things that God would do. And so I'm excited because the things I know, but I believe, church, there are things we don't even know that God wants to do, and we get to be a part of it when we step out in faith, trusting him when we plant in faith, trusting that God is good and that he can accomplish more than we ever imagined. We plant in faith. Secondly, we plant for the future. I had the privilege of growing up here at Second Baptist Church. I can remember one of our capital campaigns was called For Future Generations. I believe that's when we built the Family Life Center. We've always been a church that cared about the future. We've never been a church that worshipped the past at the expense of the present or future. We've always been a church that cared about the next generation. I believe in a multi-generational ministry. 
At second, we are a family. We don't exclude any generation as a family. There are great-grandparents, grandparents, moms and dads, kids, grandchildren, aunts and uncles. If we want to continue to be faithful to the Lord and see ministry happen for decades, we have to be committed to reaching the next generation for the gospel of Jesus Christ. We have to decide that we're not just going to be a church that our grandparents loved. We're going to be the kind of church that our grandkids want to come to. Not just the kind of church that has a great past, but a bright future. And so we want to honor the past. We want to appreciate where we've been and where we are. We want to lead effectively in the present. We want to prepare for the future. And so today, symbolically at our groundbreaking... You won't see me or Pastor Gary or Pastor Jimmy or our chairman of deacons holding a shovel in their hand. You know what you're going to see when you go to our groundbreaking? You're going to see a bunch of kids in their upward uniforms or victory sports uniforms, and they're the ones that are going to have the shovels because it represents that we want to reach these kids, boys and girls, families, moms and dads with the gospel of Jesus Christ. That's just a reminder that we plant for the future. When you plant a seed... You don't see an immediate result. It takes time. Growth is a process. When you plant a seed, you trust and you pray. You let it go in faith, trusting and believing that God will bring about the increase. There's a lot that goes into a seed growing. The process, I'm sure y'all have studied this more than I have, the process of germination, growing, producing, all the stuff that's necessary. But I'll just say this, it's beyond your control or my control. I can't make a plant grow. I can't make a seed germinate. Only God can do that. Everything we do as we seek to build the church and advance the kingdom and reach the lost and push back the darkness, it is everything that we can do in our power to obey God, but it is God that provides the power to see the harvest. Only God. We can't do that on our own. And so here are a couple of things that I want to think about in conclusion. Our job is to sow God's job is to grow. Listen, we ought to sow faithfully. We ought to cast that seed in faith, trusting and believing in God. But we can't make anything grow. I can't make the church grow. You can't make the church grow. I can't make our ministry grow. You can't make our ministry grow. But I've noticed something. The more we plant in faith, trusting in God, believing in Him, the more He grows what He wants to see grow. Our job is to sow. Only God can use this seed and cause it to grow. Once the seed is sown, the farmer no longer has any authority or any power over that seed. He can do everything that he can do, but then once the seed is sown, basically he's helpless. He must patiently wait on the reward of his efforts. Secondly, as we conclude, growth is slow, but it will eventually show. This parable teaches us that spiritual growth is not measured by a stopwatch. Most of the time it's measured in a lifetime. Spiritual growth happens over time. Kingdom growth happens over time. Growth is slow, but it eventually shows. Growth may be slow, but God's kingdom, it can be certain. The kingdom of God is planted in us. It's planted in others. The gospel is planted in people and it's planted in an instant, but it takes time to see the results of the harvest. And so what is our task? Our task is to take the seed and to scatter the seed, to plant in faith, expecting a harvest, to ask God to do what only he can do. We want to sow faithfully and be obedient, but we want him to do what only he can do. I want to do my part, but I'm asking God to do his part. Plant the seed faithfully. I think it was Robert Louis Stevenson who said, don't judge each day by the harvest you reap, but by the seeds you plant. And today, we're planting seeds. Seeds of faith, seeds of trust, seeds of hope, asking God if he would accomplish what only he can do as we seek to be obedient and faithful to his work.